What's up, everybody? This is the Jose Gagnon, the random guy. Here again, you already know what we're doing. Thomas the Train, Season 2, Everything Wrong With, Commentaries. We're on Episode 15. We got 11 more episodes to go till we have, until Season 2 is, is complete. So we're going to try to get these episodes going. Here we are with Better Late Than Never. Hope you all enjoy. We're going to get right into this because I'll be doing three Thomas the Train Everything Wrong With commentaries for you today. So we're going to start, get the things rolling. You know how it goes. Yeah, yeah. The engines were finding life difficult. Workmen were mending the viaduct on the main line. The arches needed strengthening. Sir Topham Hatt did not want to close the railway while the work was done, and so repairs took a long time. The engines had to take great care when crossing the viaduct, and the delay often made them late on their journey to the junction, where they knew Thomas would be ready to collect his passengers. I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, blame Sir Topham Hatt for not, you know, closing down the railway while the repairs were being, while the repairs are being made, because you know, for a railway, think there's there's always stuff that needs to be delivered and passengers to, you know, bring to different areas of the island. So I wouldn't blame him that he didn't close it down because, you know, railways always have to be, st you know, keep st staying busy because there's always so much work that has to be done. And there's always, you know, just as always a project after another that, that has to be completed. So, you know... I know it's tough for the engines themselves, but the engines, they got to stay busy too. So it wouldn't benefit that, you know, he would keep them in the, you know, in the, sh in the shed while the repairs were being, you know, made like, you know, cause everything has to be kept going and staying busy no matter what goes on. Cause railways are like one of like the most important, important, uh, careers and jobs that you know always has to have a lot of work being done and everything Thomas grew crosser and crosser Time's time, he grumbled. Why should I keep my passengers waiting while Henry and James dawdle about all day on viaducts? Don't blame me, snorted Henry. If we hurried across the viaduct, it might collapse, and then you'd have no passengers at all. What would you do then? Run my train on time, for one thing, retorted Thomas. He hurried away before Henry could answer. There's Thomas being selfish again just because, you know, he wants the other trains to come and do their work and be on time, just like he always tries to be. But, you know, he, he needs to understand that, you know, that while the viaduct is being repaired, like, they can't, you know, they can't increase their speed at all, the trains, so they just have to, you know, go by the speed limit and follow the rules. But since Thomas enjoys being selfish, he just... He doesn't understand that. So that's why he just likes to go and just think, you know, blame others instead of just, you know, thinking about it and, you know, trying to think about it reasonably. Bertie was impatient too. He was timed to arrive just after Thomas. His passengers found that instead of going straight from the bus to their train, they were kept waiting till Thomas arrived. Soon Bertie grew cross with Thomas. Late again, he remarked, as Thomas panted wearily in. We may 
may be friends, but I thought you could go fast, Thomas. It's time we had another race. I reckon I could beat you now. <laughs> Thomas let off steam loudly. Rubbish, he hissed fiercely. It's those main line engines. They dither about on the viaduct, and they blame Sir Topham Hatt's workmen. It's just an excuse for laziness, if you ask me. In life, it can always be wicked tough when you're trying to get the things done. But, you, you know, sometimes you, there's always going to be delays. There's always going to be delays in life. So, you know, sometimes the delays, you know, they happen at the worst possible time. And you just, you know, can't help being late whenever you're trying to, you know, get the things done or make it in time to go to some place. But, you know, like, the, you know, like I said, there's always going to be some kind of delay. And, you know, delays happen everywhere, no matter where you are. There's always going to be delays going on. Just because, you know, that's how things in the life go. You're always going to, you know, come across obstacles that you just can't overcome right away. And, you know, there's always going to be craziness and so much crazy random junk just, you know, coming into your life. And I know, like, for a lot of people, it pisses them off, but, you know, they just got to realize that they they can't help when those crazy things happen. They got to try to, you know, to, you know, just try to stay positive and just, you know, try not, not, not to let their anger get the better of them when they come across these delays and obstacles. One day, James was later than ever at the junction. I'm sorry, Thomas, he puffed. I was held up at the station and the viaduct made it worse. It's lucky for you I'm a guaranteed connection, grumbled Thomas. Before James could answer, he puffed importantly away. Come along, come along, he panted to the coaches. Annie and Clarabel did their best, but Thomas soon found that he couldn't save much time. Suddenly, Thomas saw Bertie ahead. His radiator was steaming. What's the matter, asked Thomas. You should be at the station by now. You're late. I feel dreadful, moaned Bertie, all upset inside, and driver says he can't make me better. Thank goodness you're late, too. Can you take my passengers, please? They'll never get home otherwise. Of course, agreed Thomas. He now felt sorry for Bertie and promised to get help at the next station. Thomas set off again. Already he felt much more cheerful and Bertie's passengers, traveling in Annie and Clarabelle, all reached home safely. Now he's starting to understand that being late isn't as terrible as he, you know, actually thought it is. Like he knows that, you know... It's okay to be late sometimes because, like I said, of the obstacles and delays that we, you know, always see happening in our daily lives. Because there's always going to be something to make us get delayed or, you know, some kind of obstacle that we just can't overcome right away. So, you know, now he, Thomas is starting to understand that, you know, sometimes it's okay to be late. That, you know, you're never going to, you know, you know be on time or, you know, get have the amazing days as you always think you're going to have. So he's starting to understand a lot more. Because like I said, you know, in these other seasons, he starts to mature a little bit more. And he doesn't, you know, go crazy and, you know, say crazy stuff like he once did in the earlier episodes. When Bertie was better, he came to thank Thomas. I'm sorry I teased you about being late. That's all right, replied Thomas. I'm glad I could help. There are times when being late isn't such a bad thing after all. Exactly. <laughs> With a last cheerful greeting, the two friends went back to work. Ah. So I hope you all enjoyed that episode. We'll be continuing on. Get the greatness. Have the amazing times. See you in the next video. Woo!